Hey guys, it's Elena. Welcome back to my channel. This week I made a puff quilt. It turned out really good, even though it took longer than I was expecting. So I'm going to walk you through everything that I did, all the steps, and you can make one too. Okay, so to get started, I have a list of everything you'll need for this quilt. This will get you a 63 inch by 63 inch square quilt. And keep in mind that these are just estimates. You might need more or less of these depending on how you cut and how much you stuff each little pillow puff. <laughs> so you'll go ahead and cut out all your squares. You do need a lot. You need 324 top squares and 324 bottom squares. The top squares will be four and a half inches by four and a half inches. And then the bottom scrap squares will be four inches by four inches. And you want the top squares to be a little bit bigger so you can pleat it on each side as you can see there. So the best way that I found going through and doing all of these was just to kind of start in the first corner Pleat it with my finger, match up the last corner, and then just keep going in a line. You have to start by doing this to three out of the four sides for each square. And you could do three of the sides for each square at a time, but I found it went a lot quicker if I just went and did one side at a time and just did a big long chain. And then once I was done with the first side, I would do the same exact thing for all the squares for the second and third side. So like I said, there are 324 squares. It took a long time. So put on your favorite show and get comfortable because you're gonna be sitting there sewing these squares for basically eternity. But once you're done, Pick them all up and you'll get scissors and clip in between each square so that you have 324 little empty pillowcases. <laughs> Once you have done that, I went ahead and put all my squares in similar categories and then I went through the process of starting to try to lay it all out so I could figure out how I wanted everything to sit. So for this quilt in particular and this size, I needed 18 squares by 18 squares. So I needed to somehow figure out how I was going to lay everything out. This took me a long time, longer than I was expecting, but I really wanted it to look perfect and I really wanted that nice ombre effect. So I took my time and just worked my way through it. I got my ombre inspiration from another YouTuber called Lo and Behold Stitchery. So go and check her video out. It's actually really good too. So once you have finalized your layout and you're really happy with it, go ahead and take each row and stack it so that you know the order of your squares and you know which row number it was. So lay it out, label it, and then go and take the first and second square of your first row, put them right sides together, and sew them together with a half inch seam allowance. You wanna do it basically just a little bit bigger than you did the first time when you were sewing the pleats so that you don't see the pleat seam. And then take the third square, sew it to the second square, and then just keep doing that for your first row. And then you will start again for the next row and basically do that 18 times. Also make sure that all of your openings are going the same direction. That is very necessary for the next step. So here's my beautiful first row. I was real happy with how that turned out. And then you can see in the background, I have just rolls and rolls of rows. So, so all 18 rows and then take your first row, 
get a handful of polyfill and then start stuffing. So I stuffed one at a time. I stuffed the first square and then you're going to pleat it just like you did before and then sew a less than a half inch. So I went kind of with a quarter inch seam allowance and you're just gonna go all the way down stuffing as you go. Make sure that you're not overstuffing, but also make sure that you're not understuffing either. I think I understuffed just a few and I wish that they were just a little bit puffier, but it got better in the end, especially as I took much needed snack breaks. <laughs> Once you have your first row totally complete, it's all puffed up, you're going to take your second row and try to nest those seams match up the top and then you are going to sew those two rows together with a half inch seam allowance again to make sure that you're not seeing any of that previous pleating seam and just make sure that you're doing your best to nest each of the seams all the way down it will really make a difference in the long run if all of your seams are lined up and looking crisp and clean Yeah, this happens to me way more than I'd like to admit. I don't know if anybody else is like this, but refilling my bobbin is the bane of my existence. I hate it so much. It's needed, but ugh, it's just so annoying, especially like right in the middle of a stitch. Yeah. So basically, you're just going to repeat that process 18 times and just keep stuffing and then pleating and then stuffing and then pleating and then nesting and sewing together the next row and then just doing it all over again. So here I had done like five rows and I was so proud of myself. I was like, oh my gosh, it's a puff quilt. I was so excited. But then I actually finished and was able to see it in its full puffy glory and it was awesome. Once you have completed your quilt, it's time to put it all together. So take your backing, put down your batting, make sure it's not lumpy at all, and then lay down and line up your quilt on top and then get to pinning. <laughs> I use the special quilt curved safety pins and it makes a huge difference. Pin every two to three, and then I went ahead and tied my quilt. This process is a little bit difficult because there's so many layers. So I don't know if this is good or not, but I usually use pliers to help get through all the layers. And then I just used some embroidery floss that I had laying around and it went pretty well. And then once I had done all of that, I went ahead and sewed all the way around the perimeter of the quilt just to make sure that in the next step it's all secured and not move around or anything like that. After I went through and sewed the perimeter, I cut all of the excess batting and backing away. And just be careful not to cut too much away. You just wanna get right up to your raw fabric. So the next step is to bind your quilt. There are a lot of different ways that you can do this, but my preferred method is to use double folded bias tape. I find that it's easiest for me and it still looks really, really nice. So you're going to take your bias tape, open it up all the way, line up that edge of your bias tape to the edge of your fabric, and then pin it along that fold. Fold in the edge and then you can start sewing in that folded divot and 
do your best go slow and make sure that you're really getting in there when you get to a corner you're going to sew at a diagonal off the corner so stop about a half inch to the end pivot and then sew straight into the corner and then you can go ahead and clip your thread you can see that it's at a diagonal into that corner and then you're going to go ahead and use your fingers and fold up your bias tape secure it with a pin and then you can go ahead and just continue sewing in that divot and this will give you a really really nice looking mitered corner it won't pucker and it will be really nice and secure Eventually, you are going to run out of bias tape and need to attach a second thing of bias tape. So once you get to the end, fold your bias tape in and then you can just overlap that second layer of bias tape and then just continue sewing just like you did before. So once you have gone and done that, then it is time to fold over your bias tape and finish it off. So I found sometimes it's easiest to go and trim that backing a little bit so there's less bulk, but you're basically just going to fold in and then sew along the edge of that bias tape and get it really, really close so that it catches on the other side. And then when it comes to corners, you're just going to fold down, poke it in with your finger, and then fold in the other side. Make sure it's really nice and secure and that that corner and diagonal is at a 45 degree angle and it will look real nice. So here it is in all of its ombre glory. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it's so cute and I think it was time well spent. It's definitely thick and luxurious and feels like you're cuddling just like 300 pillows. <laughs> it's wonderful. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know if you end up making it and I'm excited to see you next time.